three third graders. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. I just felt like it today. I don't know. Okay, so um, I hope y'all are doing okay and hope you're ready for health class. So um, we are going to review the comprehension check that y'all did last week. I know I'm talking all Southern, but just deal. It's fine. No big deal. Just let's just keep rolling with it. Um, but I hope you're ready to go through that. I hope you did your comprehension check. We're going to review over the answers. Excuse me. Oh my goodness. I'm being so rude. I'm so sorry. Um, and then we're going to go on to today's lesson. We taught, we've been talking about staying safe outside, um, outdoor safety and all of that, which we probably need to start including um, social distance safety and, um, you know, staying, you know, six feet away and all of those other things now that are um, part of our outdoor safety. But we talked about where to walk on the right side, not the right homonyms like we talked about yesterday, not the right side of the road, the left side of the road, but the correct side of the road. Um, we talked about how, where to ride our bikes um, correctly on the right side of the road. Um, excuse me. Um, we talked about parking lot safety and um, not playing in the street because that's not safe. When we are on the playground looking for trash and holes and different things that could, uh, you know, make our play not as, as fun because there could be problems. So many of those things were outside, but we also need to talk about indoor safety. And then we don't think about it that often, but indoor safety is something that we need to be aware of as well. So we will be talking about home safety and that kind of thing uh, today, um, but we'll review over our comprehension check. So number one on page 112, Number one, you should blank swim alone, right? So never swim alone or you should not swim alone either way. That's fine as long as you're telling that you should not ever, ever, ever go swimming by yourself. Always let an adult know, your parents, um, you know, or whoever's taking you swimming, let them know that you are going into the water. Don't go swimming alone because if something happens, nobody knows where you are or no, and, and nobody knows how to try to get to you or help you or whatever, if there happen to be any kind of a problem. If you do not know how to swim, stay in blank water. Some of you got, yes, shallow Shallow means not deep. So, you know, water that not, you know, that little bit, but water that's not deep. You might be able to go up to your um, thighs and, you know, maybe up to your waist and it's not deep or it's not going to be, you know, you standing on your tiptoes trying to like stay above water when you don't know how to swim because if you slip or if something happens, and you haven't learned how to swim, one of the biggest problems with people when they haven't learned how to swim is that they're not controlled. They're not calm. And when you're not calm, that's when problems happen. And that's when bad things can take place. So you um, should not ever be in deep water, stay in shallow water. But this even means what, what it said in your book as well, not getting on inner tubes or little floaties and then floating into the deeper end because what happens when you fall off of that if you haven't learned how to swim when you fall off of that and maybe it's on top of you or you know there's other people around that are you know splashing and having fun because they know how to swim <clears throat> that could cause more danger for you so don't go in the deep end stay in the shallow end i know it's not popular when you have friends that maybe have you know learned how to swim and all of that but it's safer and you're protecting yourself. So make sure you should always wear a blank when you are in a small boat, life vest or life preserver. Okay. You should always wear a life vest when you are in a small boat. Why should you stay away from water during an electrical storm? Because that there's a danger of getting struck by lightning. Yes. Very good. Um, water attracts that, that lightning. List two ways you can help someone in the water who needs help. What are some ways, right? You can hold something out to them. So whether it be a paddle or an oar of some sort, whether it's a towel, but if they're too far away, then you want to 
not like you have to carefully either toss it out or push out a floating device or something to them but you should not get in the water to help them even if you know how to swim there's a difference between knowing how to swim and knowing how to save a life because many times when somebody is being saved from a situation like that the first thing that they do is grab on push you so that they can get up and get that air and now you're underwater and you you're not comfortable and you weren't expecting that and then it becomes a whole problem so throw something out to them not something hard and heavy you don't want to knock them out but toss something out to them or hold something out to them only if you're secure um but but you know send a floaty out to them even a life preserver life vest something that can float that they can hold on to and make their way back to shore so those are some important things for outdoor safety um that we've talked about whether it's swimming whether it's uh, riding your bike or walking or playing on a playground, whatever it may be. But now home safety. Just as it is important to practice good safety habits outside your home, you should practice good safety habits at home. If you stay aware of what you are doing and what is going on around you, being aware, we talked about, remember, fewer accidents will happen. Listen to this statement. And it's written italicized with the fancy little lettering so that it means it wants to emphasize it. More accidents happen at home than anywhere else. And you have to think, we're home a lot of the time. So most accidents, more accidents happen at home than they do at the, at the beach or, you know, um, at the store, in the parking lot, on the street, riding your bike. More accidents happen at home than anywhere else. Many of these accidents cause serious injuries. The most common cause of serious injuries in the home is falls. That's the most common thing. So when people have, you know, called from home to, you know, emergency numbers or gone to the doctor, I fell at home. I fell at home. It's more prevalent at home than it is other places. Falls can be caused by loose rugs that are in our homes slippery floors you know maybe mom just waxed or, or you know or polished or mopped or whatever standing on chairs to reach high places i know that's a popular thing to do but it can be very dangerous you climb up on a chair and try to reach that um you know thing in the back cabinet back there and other also tripping over things that are out of place okay like ladies toys that are kind of everywhere um and it's easy to trip on so those are some of the most common things that, that happen at home for people. Most falls are preventable. Um, what can you do to prevent accidents at home? Well, one of the things, like we said, is to stay aware. You know, loose rugs, move the loose rug or, you know, find a way to, to you know, tack it down safely or something. Um, slippery floors. Well, if you're watching and you know that mom just washed the floor, mopped the floor, then maybe don't go on it yet. You know, wait, because when it's wet, it can cause falls. Um, being aware, oh, there's things on the floor. I'm going to trip on them. Move those things rather than, so they can be prevented if we take care and are aware. Most of the accidents happen where? More accidents happen at home than anywhere else. And most of those are what? They're from falls okay so when we fall that happens a lot of times at home because of loose rugs slippery floors things not in the right place all of those are causes of fall so we need to be very careful weather safety did you know that you can practice safety during storms storms can range from very mild to se severe how you prepare for a storm and what you do during the storm will make a big difference in your safety. If you know a storm is coming, plan indoor activities for the day. Don't plan, oh, I know a storm's coming, but I'm going to go out. We're going to, and then, you know, if it gets bad, then we'll all rush inside. Well, no, plan indoor activities. Just be prepared for that. Lightning is a dangerous part of a storm. If you are outside and see lightning or hear thunder, take cover right away. Don't just stand out there and say, oh, I just enjoy watching it. I enjoy hearing it. It's not safe. Lightning does strike 
and it can strike you, so you need to be careful. Lightning can strike five to 10 miles from the storm it is in. So it might not be the storm right overhead of you. Lightning can go five to 10 miles out from the storm before you even see that storm there. If you cannot go inside, being in a car will help to keep you safe. That's one of the safest places to be is in, in a car if you can't be um, inside. If you are inside during a lightning storm, unplug all appliances and stay away from windows. Um, can go through windows. Do not take a bath during a lightning storm. Why? We just talked about the fact that lightning, um, water attracts electricity, that lightning. So that is just not a safe place to be using water, sitting in water, all of that. But, but I'm in my house, right? But, but there is that attraction of the lightning. Lightning has been known to go through windows and go into homes and all of that. It, it, it's, it's not a, um, you know, like a set thing where it's not going to hit here and it's not going to hit there. No, lightning is just kind of sporadic and you don't know where or when or how it's going to hit or how bad it's going to hit. So you need to just be very careful. Um, if the power goes out, use a flashlight instead of a candle so that you will not have to worry about starting a fire. Um, with your parents there, that's that's up to them. They'll, they'll be in charge of that. But a flashlight is a lot easier to, to carry around, handle. Um, where a candle, you know, you have to be very, very careful because if you set it in the wrong place or you're walking around with it and you drop it, that could cause a fire, which would make things much worse. So just be very careful. If a tornado warning is issued for your town, go to an inner room or closet without windows. If your house has a basement, that is the safest place to be during a tornado. Stay there until the warning ends. Don't get out until the warning is done. During um, a storm, layer your clothing to keep warm. A winter storm, excuse me. Layer your clothing to keep warm. Be sure to bundle up when you go outside. Don't forget your hat, gloves, scarf, and boots. If your clothing gets wet from snow, change into dry clothes. And this is why at school when we had, were outside and we said, you know, it's winter, so bring your snow stuff. And even though it didn't snow that much for us this year, um, we wanted a change of clothes because some of you, you went out and then you rolled around in the snow, remember? And then you came in and you're like, I'm wet. Um, and it's like in sitting in wet clothes is not healthy for your body. So change into dry clothes. So always bring something to change into at school if you're at school. But that's why, you know, bring um, um, snow pants or something like that. So you're being careful of that. Um, but the one thing that I want to say um, because storms are scary. I do not like them. Okay. And it's a very big struggle. But don't forget, even in the storms and thinking of the scary things, Psalm 56, 3, it's what I have to remind myself often. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. We need to trust in the Lord and know that he's taking care of us because that's an important thing. So really um, trust in him and don't let yourself get so worried and worked up that you forget who is in control. Fire safety. Fires can be helpful, but they can also be dangerous because most house fires are caused by carelessness. That's it. They're caused just because people weren't being careful. They can be prevented with good safety habits. You should never play with fire. Never. You know, oh, I'm just going to light, you know, just play with a little, um, you know, candle lighter or whatever. I'm just going to play with it. Shouldn't do that because it takes one slip of the hand or one wrong place to put that and and fire just feeds on you know whatever it can get so be aware of that um don't play with fire to keep everyone in your home safe you should have an escape plan that shows you how to get out of your house in case of a fire so this is something that you can talk to about um talk with your parents about because it is an important thing to say okay what if this scenario happens? What do we do for this? And what do we have? Because, you know, <clears throat> if there's a fire in the kitchen, okay, do you have a safe plan? Well, what if there's a fire in the hallway? Do you have a plan of safety? So that way you'll always know this is what we do. Just like at school, we have fire drills for a reason. We'll talk about that um, in just a little bit. But um, you need to have a plan. Designate a specific place outside your home where everyone in your family is to meet and then practice your escape plan regularly. 
we have fire drills at school so that way you know exactly where to go. If you weren't even with Miss Monroe, you were in the bathroom or you were down the hall getting a drink or you were in the office and you had to go out, you would know, I know where my class goes. This is where we always stand. I can go and I can wait for them or there they are, I see them. Um, you have that plan. Well, the same thing needs to happen in your home. That way you're not so worried and we're not you know, chasing around and <clears throat> calling in the house and, and needlessly running into the house when everybody is outside but not in their places. We need to stay as safe as possible. So this is something that's important to practice. Um, talk to your parents and see, you know, can we get something together so that if anything happens, we have a, a plan for safety. If your home is on fire, get out immediately. There's no waiting. There's no grabbing as much stuff as you can. Just get out. Once a fire starts, it spreads quickly. Never go back into a burning building. Never. Call 911 for help. Explain your emergency, then say your name and the address of the emergency. So you tell them who you are, but you need to tell them the address. That's how they're going to know where to come. And that's why you need to know your address. Okay. After you have given the information, stay on the phone until help arrives. One of the things that happens sometimes is we're like, I need help right here at such and such a street in such and such a place. Okay, bye. And we hang up the phone and then we're like, where's the ambulance? Where's the fire department? Sometimes the the um, the person that you're calling a 911, they need more information and they're going to ask you that information. So you stay on the line with them until help comes and then they'll let you go. If you aren't able to get out of the building, stay calm so you can think clearly. Look for a window or another way out. If the window is too high for you to escape, yell to let others know you need help and wait for someone to rescue you. Don't hide. Okay, That's one of the things that a lot of people, children do <clears throat> because they get afraid. Yell and, and call out so that people know where you are. So you're going to discuss your escape plan with your family and then write and draw your plan at the bottom of page 114. A firefighter wears special equipment for protection when he is fighting fires. And we've seen that when our firefighters come for uh, in October to kind of share some things with us. So we know that they are going to look a little different. When he is wearing this equipment, he looks and sounds different. In an emergency, you should never run or hide from a firefighter. If you need help getting out of a fire, a firefighter is the one that helps you. If your clothes ever catch on fire, do not run. Running will cause air and air feeds the fire. We want to cut the fire down. We want to take the air out of the fire so you don't run. Running will make the fire spread faster. You should stop, drop, and roll. And we know that. We've heard that plenty of times. But stop, drop, and roll. Lie down. Cover your face with your hands. Protect your face. And then roll over and over on the ground or floor until the fire is out. Just keep rolling. If there is a heavy blanket or a rug close by, you can put the fire out by wrapping yourself in that blanket. You think, no, it's going to burn me more. No, it's not. It's going to kill the, um, the air getting to that fire and it's going to douse the fire. <clears throat> Um, so wrap yourself in the blanket or rug and roll on the floor. Be sure to keep your head clear of the blanket so that you can breathe. Fire needs air to burn and the blanket or rug will, rug will keep the air out. So fire only burns with air. Okay, If you take away that air, it's going to go out. Um, normally I do a little, you know, experiment. It's not really, but I would, you know, have, we have our candles in the classroom and I would light the candle and then I would just put the cap, you know, the top on the candle and show students, see what happens when I put the cap on. The air's gone and that candle will go out. The fire will go out because there's no air. So when there's no air for the fire, that's when the fire will die down. That's why you roll around on the ground so you're killing the air from hitting the fire. And then if you can roll up in something, that's the best thing. Caution, if your clothes catch on fire, stop, drop, and roll, okay? And then fire safety, never play with candles, matches, or lighters. Have an escape plan. Smoke and heat detectors warn of danger. You need those working in your home. Never go back into a burning building. To escape a burning building, get low and go. Get low and go. If your clothes catch fire, stop, 
drop, and roll. Do not run or hide from a firefighter. Stay calm, think clearly, call 911. And remember when you do, state your name and the address so they know where to go. All right, and then the bottom of page 116, comprehension check. I want you to work on that. We'll go over it tomorrow um, when we do our next few pages, okay? So working carefully on that comprehension check, thinking those through. <clears throat> if you're not sure, look back and figure out the answers and figure out where to find those. We only did from page 112 to 116, so it'll be easy to find those, okay? All right, so do well on this, work hard, and we'll see you in the next video. See you, bye.